I'm an amateur paleontologist. I've been collecting uh, fossils, Cincinnati, Cincinnati and uh, fossils in the tri-state area for the last 15 years. And what I have here are the most common of all fossils in the Cincinnati tri-state area, bryzoans. Bryzoans are similar to coral, but they are different species. They are smaller. Usually we find them in the most common form as fragmented, uh, looks like broken twigs. These are the pieces of the individual pieces that have broken apart and they're on the seafloor. The Cincinnati Tri-State area, it's understood in mainstream science and geology that for hundreds of millions of years the from the Cambrian uh, up into the Permian, multiple geologic periods, that it, the world was a little bit warmer and the ice caps did not exist. Sea level was uh, much higher. When the world was a little bit warmer, ice caps melted, sea level was 600 feet higher. And that put the lowland areas of the United States and other continents of the world under anywhere from 5 to 50 feet of uh, seawater. And so the tri-state area is world famous for its what's called Ordovician Age fossils. Mainstream science makes the claim that they are 440 million years old on average. They are anti-evolutionist, they are creationist, that make the claim they have a pre-scientific way of looking at the world and they pretty much discard all mainstream science which uh, is not in agreement with creationism. They make the claim, and have made it for many centuries, that all the Paleozoic fossils are a result of Noah's flood. That is, all these inland fossils of all these seashells. Uh, we live in one of the best places in the world for finding these uh, quantities, vast quantities of seashells in the Cincinnati region. And the irony here is that these wonderful fossils, and you can see my previous video, it's titled Answers AIG Creation Museum Refuted by Fossils Found Below the Museum. You can Google that and you can see my entire video on that. This is a response to all the creationists who write in. I cannot teach people the science of geology in under 10 minutes. But one of the most common things that they claim is that this is, all these fossils are the result from Noah's flood. Mainstream science has not been able to find evidence of a universal flood. There may have been smaller floods in other parts of the world which might correspond, which created that myth. Uh, Babylonian flooding myth in that part of the world. Bryozoans have this unique ability to do two things. One, it proves the antiquity of the earth. At least with bryozoans alone, we can count up hundreds of millions. You can't count up to billions, but at least you can prove it's, at, it's far, far older than 6,000 years old. And it also proves that these are not the result of Noah's flood. Now let me explain how. With childlike simplicity, you can go out and observe this with your own uh, five senses. And you can take a walk in the tri-state area and see our world famous fossils. You don't have to be in Cincinnati. The Cincinnati Arch, the rock layer, is called the Cincinnati Series. The Cincinnati Arch is the upward bowing of the rocks. It extends outwards 200 miles in all directions. So right underneath the Creation Museum itself, are alternating bands of limestone and rock and it's true of all the buildings in this vicinity around the tri-state the Cincinnati tri-state area. The creationist claim is that these fossils traveled from the seas and oceans to get buried onto the mainland of the United States and other parts of the world. That doesn't hold up under scrutiny and here's the reason why. These bryozoans are found commonly fragmented here they are as broken stick, looks like broken sticks and twigs. If you take these and glue them back together, you will find the whole pieces. I am one of the very few people in the world that glue these back together. There are literally millions of layers of bryozoan and coral reefs in the fossil record. That is, these rock layers, you can see with, the, with your eye, at the surface hundreds of layers. If you go up and down an elevation you'll see hundreds of more. You get in your car, drive a little bit farther, get elevation above it or below it and you'll see hundreds of more layers uh, of limestone and shale sticking out. In amongst all that limestone and shale you will find these by the millions. 
that is millions of individual pieces as well as millions of layers, millions of layers of strata, one on top of another. One reef on top of another, on top of another, and top of another. They, now, if they were all washed in by Noah's flood, what would that be? They would all be broken bits and pieces, jumbled and scrambled. There would be no rhyme and reason. They would be they would look have a very different appearance than the way we actually see them. We can find, we can take these piles, put them, collect all the pieces and glue them back together and they are whole. Why is this significant? Because it indicates that they lived, grew and died here. These are thriving seafloor communities. These bryozoans have bases where they are attached to the seafloor. This one here, for example, the base is right here. And when it was alive, it was mineralized. It's mineralized today, but it was a different mineral when it was a, a living uh, specimen. It grew to the seafloor. These bryozoan reefs cannot be transported uh, hundreds of miles away and end up intact with all their bits and pieces all whole and in one place. That is the key to understanding that these things lived, grew, and died here because you can glue back the pieces as I have and find them whole. They cannot, think of them as a, as a tumbleweed. Tumbleweed, the, the terrestrial plant that that is blown by the wind and goes along the uh, desert floor by the wind, that can't be done with bryozoans. Every time they would be pushed along and hit the bottom of the seafloor, it would break one chunk off after another piece after another twig-like appendage over and over again. Even if you had some kind of force that could transport it in a water column hundreds of miles away, even the very act of settling down, they couldn't be, uh, they wouldn't stay together and whole. Now, if that's not, you could, you could make the argument that a few of them could, that could happen to. But you have to keep in mind these are by the millions. Millions of individuals to the left and right and millions of layers of them up and down, up and down, stacked right on top of each other. These reefs of Corum bryozoan took a long time to grow and they grew in place. Do you, do you understand the concept of how this shows the quantity of the passage of time? Another comparison would be archaeology. If you had building on top of building, city on top of city buried, and a new city on top of it, and that buried, that city would be buried, and another city on top of that by the millions, you know it's an enormous passage of time to have even one of those cities made. Same thing, these are underwater seafloor communities of bryozoan and coral reefs, and one is buried on top of the other, and that represents an enormous passage of time. There is no way around this. Noah's flood cannot deposit millions of these individuals and millions of the layers in less than a year's time. It cannot give this fake appearance of sea community the, which, the way the fossils do. I want to point out that on the Creationist Museum, just anywhere from a few inches to a few feet underneath the topsoil, you can find these world famous fossils. Ken Ham ought to be excavating it and putting these all on display for the public to see. He wouldn't, all he has to do is get a bulldozer and a garden hose and he can wash these out and he can show off these world famous fossils. And that's what he ought to be doing. Some, he has many acres to show off to the public these world famous fossils. And he ought to be jumping up and down and taking advantage of that. But he's not going to do that. The reason why is because it's going to bring up too many questions. These seashells are not like modern day seashells. You do not see any modern day sea life mixed in with them. There are no modern day seashells of the same size. There are no modern day sea urchins or brain coral or starfish or fish of any type whatsoever. It brings up far too many questions that the creationist uh, customers are going to be asking. So it's not too likely that Ken Ham is going to be displaying any of the fossils on his property to the public for this very reason. Even, even the scientifically challenged creationist would be able to put one and one together and realize that there's something not right with these fossils. They don't match up with the story of creation and with God making all 
of the sea creatures on one day. Why is it that we can't find any of the uh, modern day representatives mixed in with these? They try to make the claim, Henry Morris tried to make the claim of hydraulic sorting, that somehow the uh, different speeds of the water, the different animals settle down at different rates and at different space intervals. Sounds good on paper, but it doesn't work in real life.